Hi guys, this is Wizard1 from Red Flag Deals bringing you another unboxing setup and benchmarking video. Today we have the LTE River 802.11 AC Wi-Fi 1200 megabits per second dual band AC slash N dongle model name 1200 AC. I recently switched over to that Rogers Gigabit 500U2999 deal two weeks ago and decided I really needed to update my crappy TrendNet Wi-Fi G dongle as well. When browsing online, I decided to go to Amazon rather than having to wait for eBay or other places to, for delivery. I found this USB Wi-Fi dongle and it seems to be the cheapest Wi-Fi AC dongle around at $18.99 Canadian with a regular inflated retail price of $59.99. So I bought it and we're going to set it up today, test it today with my Chewy Hi10 Pro. Please check out the description below for a table of contents if you want to jump to specific parts of this video. So first of all, keep in mind that this item began selling on Amazon back in July of 2015. So technically the tech within this is about two and a half years old. Some further investigation shows that the Wi-Fi chip powering the 1200AC is now the discontinued Realtek RTL818X chipset. The packaging itself is really basic, nothing more than some plastic flaps uh, holding the packaging together. The 1200 AC features fast 1200 megabits per second speeds, which is defined by up to 867 megabits per second for 5 gigahertz AC Wi-Fi and 300 megabits per second for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi A, B, G, and N. It is also a 3.0 USB spec dongle with two internal 3 dBi antennas. It is compatible with Windows XP through to Windows 10 and for Apple Mac OS 10.6 and above. Bear in mind that this dongle itself is about 4 inches long and 1.5 inches wide and 0.5 inches thick. So it is by no means small or compact. Make sure you take these dimensions into account, especially if your device has any physical limitations depending on where your USB ports are located. Okay, so let's open this up now. So you can see it comes with the dongle itself. The installation disc with drivers. A what is this? A warranty card and a quick installation guide. Okay. So now what I do have is a portable USB CD DVD drive. I decided to just pop the installation disc uh, onto my USB drive here so that things could run more smoothly. One of my desktop DVD drives had problems reading the installation disc that was included. Um, it wasn't until I moved it over to my other drive that it read properly. That being said, I do realize that there are some rigs out there nowadays that are completely CD slash DVD less. Um, in which case, you can head over to their website, lteriver.com, and download their drivers directly from the support pages. As a side note, before doing this video, I did some research and found that people were stating that the dongle had problems working uh, because they inserted the dongle first into the into their computer uh, before installing the drivers. So make sure when you do, if you do get this and you want to uh, test it out, that you install the drivers first before you actually plug this into your device, or you might have problems uh, going forward. Okay, so let me just uh, quickly install the drivers onto my Windows 10 setup here and then we'll do a benchmark.
Actually, just while looking at this device, um, I actually noticed here it does have a, looks like it's the WPS button for uh, pairing this with your existing router. You can't really see it and it's not mentioned in the docs, but it looks like it does support that. Okay, let's finish letting this load. It's really taking its sweet time. Um, let's see if it's frozen or not. It's sitting there not doing anything. I have no clue what it's doing. So we'll see what goes on. I tried switching the um, memory card now, see if that helps it. I'm not sure why it got stuck there before. Uh, anyways, if it doesn't work, we do know that the drivers are installed. It's just the utility managing the um, the dongle. This oh, it looks like it's doing it now. But the utility wasn't working before. It wasn't installing or just froze there. So if this doesn't work, I guess we will try to let it just use Windows uh, built-in Wi-Fi detection and see if that just works with this. Okay, so I'm going to just give up. I'm going to give up on installing their own wireless LAN utility. Uh, what I'll do is hopefully, once I reboot Windows and I get the drivers are installed, I know that. So once we do that, we're just going to reboot everything and then hopefully the dongle will work on this. Okay, so I rebooted it and let me just disable the internal Wi-Fi. Okay, so we temporarily disabled the internal Wi-Fi. Uh, so we'll go plug in the LTE river and see how that works. Okay, this is really big, so let me see if I can find something to support it so it doesn't snap off or something. There we go. Okay, so let's try to connect to something. Okay. Okay, so now we're connected to my, this would be the 2.4 gigahertz network, so, um, We'll benchmark this now and then I'll compare it to what I have on my cell phone and you can see the, I guess, the speed differences if there are any. So let's make sure that we are on the same, we're testing the same server. Okay, so this will be the first test using 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Let's see how fast we get.
Okay, so that was using the LTE River dongle. Now let me try on my cell phone. Uh, let me just, I'm connected to the same Wi Fi right now, so let me see how fast I get on this. Okay, so comparing the results, you can see download-wise, the LTE River beats out my phone with the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, 40.5 versus 77, but then to upload my Xiaomi Mi Max 2 here, I uh, performed better with that. So let me switch over to my AC wireless AC um, connection and see how fast that one takes. Okay, so let me just... Switch over. Okay, so now we are connected to my wireless AC 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And let's see how that handles it. Same server again. Okay, so you can see with uh, 5G Wi-Fi, um, the results are pretty much the same. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Uh, let's try with the phone. Okay, so there is a substantial difference on the phone versus the tablet. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Okay, so just to follow up with the test on my Chewy High 10 Pro, um, we the results was a, not the greatest. It's still faster than what I was used to on my uh, my regular speeds. But uh, we're gonna use it on my desktop instead, and actually the speed tests using the. LTE River AC1200 uh, is a lot better on my desktop. So we'll just try this on the same server again as before. Okay, so you can see the speeds are about double what they were on the High 10 Pro. One last thing I wanted to mention is that um, when I was setting it up on my computer, something weird happened with the dongle. Uh, whenever I plugged it into my USB 3.0 port, it would just basically connect. It would try to look for a Wi-Fi signal and then it would just suddenly dis the device would just suddenly disappear from my computer. Uh, going into the desktop 
uh, device manager, it basically said that the device could not start. I don't know why that is. Um, I tried uninstalling the the software that it came with and just installed just the drivers and it still had that issue. However, when I took it back out and put it into my standard USB 2.0 port, it worked perfectly fine and you can see here this, the speeds that I got now. That's the speeds that I got with the 2.0 port. So again, it's not going to exceed my uh, threshold for the speeds of uh, 2.0 anyways. So. I guess I'll just live with this and just have it on my USB 2.0 port and leave my 3.0 port for my other devices. Um, so overall, I guess it's a good deal. $18.99 on Amazon for for this. This has been Wizard1 bringing you the unboxing, the setup, and the benchmarking for the LTE River 1200AC USB dongle for Wi-Fi AC. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates whenever new reviews or unboxings are posted. This is Wizard1. Thank you and have a great day.